You're listening to Articulate with your hosts, Kevin Kramer and Sean Gillespie, your go-to guys for art tips, techniques, and general artist ramblings. Presented by drawingandcoloring.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Articulate, the podcast where we talk about everything art. And I am your host, Kevin Kramer, and with me, as always, my co-host, Sean Gillespie. And today, we are going to be tackling the subject of... Propaganda. 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 Yeah. And more specifically, elements of art in propaganda and how they use artistic elements Mm. to achieve propaganda. Interesting. But first, Kevin, what is propaganda? Interesting question. Interesting question. I'm glad you asked. I don't know. I don't know. If only we had a definition. As I think I might have found a pretty good one right here. All right. Good deal. The definition that I have for propaganda is information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. Okay. So basically, propaganda is persuasion to a call to action or to make you believe a certain belief. It uh, doesn't necessarily have to be political. It can be religious or it can True. be uh, anything. But basically, it's it's trying to persuade somebody to believe something or right. to do something, a call of action, rather than trying to actually sell them something which like you would in advertising. So it, it actually has yeah. a lot of principles of marketing. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, yeah, basically, but. it's basically advertising, but instead of trying to sell you something... Selling you dreams, baby. Yeah, selling you ideas. They're selling you, they're of a better you life. something way better than things. They're selling you the world. Selling you meaning. But one of the things that uh, I like to point out from that definition, which is I think we're, we're going to talk about quite a bit here, yeah. is the manipulation part. Um, right. Because it's very one-sided, it propaganda is. is. I mean, it's yeah. not all about presenting all sides and being equal. No, it's showing uh, the better... It's, better parts of your argument right it's yeah you're you've got a clear the, one-sided <laughs> argument and you're going to try to make that as clear as possible and persuade people to do that exactly. and and that's where the art comes in the it, art principles okay. art principles yeah principles definitely. that go into art right but before we get into that i want to talk a little bit about um some of the ways that they achieve that not not necessarily the artistic principles so much as uh some of the dirty tricks oh. that they kind of pulled, yeah. For yeah. example, in World War II, which I feel like is the, the golden age of that would propaganda. That probably as be far the most posters. idealistic of yeah. time I mean, for I, propaganda. Yeah, I feel like that's when like you think of propaganda posters, you think of World War II. I do, at least. I, don't, I can't think of any other time. Yeah, I mean, that's like that's when it was they were making it happen. Printing, and um, Printing presses, everything. Right. And one of the things they would do a lot of times is uh, just blatant racism. They, <laughs> they would just true. basically make the enemy look very uh, warped and twisted and one of the demonized. Painted, demonized. Yeah, and they would use that and they would make them, they would show pictures of them doing horrible things to innocent people. Like right. would you did have a lot of that because that's your, your, Manipulating, you're pulling on people's heartstrings, right? Showing them, hey, like, how could he possibly how? be doing that? That's a child. Yeah. Why, you know, and all Hate this, those right? And but you go to, you too. know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then you go to like, for example, uh, in in World War Two, the Nazis had a big propaganda campaign, obviously, uh, as did the Americans. But a lot of the propaganda posters are almost the same, except just reversed are they? you know yeah. well you know i mean you know arguably but you, yeah. you i'm not saying that they're, you, they're, they're pushing two that they just switched the cut uniform right, so i'm not saying that there was like one artist guy, playing both guy. sides that right. one going on but i'm saying that you know you could definitely right they were they, interchangeable they were propagating yeah, their yeah. messages right and then but to neither combat. Of them, right but one of the artists that i kind of want to talk about is um he was is thomas hart benton mm. who uh i'm a big fan of his work mm-hmm. not him as a person, right? Big, Point that out. Big known racist. <laughs> he was uh, he was he was uh, homophobic and he was a bit of a racist. Yeah, he was a uh, a talented artist with uh, perhaps a little narrow mindedness, a flair for propaganda, uh, and a flair <laughs> definitely a flair for propaganda. So during World War II, uh, you know, as an American, he was impassioned, right? And uh, by all of the propaganda, <laughs> yeah, yeah, by all the propaganda that he was seeing, inundated with, yeah. And he started uh, doing a series of paintings, and one of them, the most famous, is probably called the Sours. Okay. And it's a painting of a Japanese soldier who was like twisted and turned into like 
I am unhuman, and he's like gorilla like, and he's like, yeah, he's got these pile of skulls underneath him. Yeah, and there's no text in the painting; it's just a painting. I mean, it's so it's not uh, an advertisement in that that there's no. But you know what's going on. But it's propaganda because it's it's very clear, very one sided argument. He's got an agenda that he's pushing on you, and so see the message. Right. So it kind of begs the question, though, Kevin, is is all political art <clears throat> propaganda? Hmm. Well, question. Political, well. We, we don't need an answer. I'm just okay. going to throw that out there because I put you on the spot. I'm going to think about that Think one. about it, though, because it is worth qu- asking because, you know, if, if you're, <sighs> I mean, if you're an artist, do you have to be objective or can you have a political stance? I feel like you can. Well, yeah, I would, I would argue if you, if you have a political stance or if you have any stance... Mm-hmm. You're propagating your message. You are. That's propaganda. For example, yeah, I did uh, during the BP oil spill, uh, a Louisianian, and uh, as are you. (laughs) But as such, I was very mad at the spill. And I did a couple of paintings showing, yeah, just the oil rig blowing up and then just oil spilling up from the ocean and all that. And it's, they're very clear and very against oil you can see what's going <laughs> yeah, on yeah yeah i mean it's very they're, they're they're propaganda which you can check out at flipbookstudios.com <laughs> yeah, if you wanted to you could <laughs> but not plugging it here i'm just saying that when uh, when you're a painter and you become impassioned by some, the current events right it's very easy to flip into a propaganda Type level of, to become yeah. a propagandist as opposed right. to just an artist but is that necessarily a bad thing well if it well hmm. Hmm. Get me it's on a deep question. There. Yeah, deep. Think about it. Send us your thoughts on that. But what I want to talk to Kevin here about. Yeah, <laughs> this guy. This guy is how is propaganda achieved? Because I mean, more specifically, World War II pro- posters or, or right. propaganda posters. So now because, we're getting into the art right, side. Of yeah, it. getting into the art side. <laughs> how is that achieved? Because obviously. You, there are elements that you can use. Right, there's composition, color, all, right. all the things that make up composition. Let's talk about composition for a minute. Okay. All right, so tell us some of the compositions that you might see in propaganda that would be very suited to propaganda. Well, I think there's those stereotypical ones, the uh, the, the beams of light, like the okay. rays, or the Japanese, like, uh, what is that? The Tiberian sun type oh, of yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, where the rays are coming out. And... and what is that? I mean, be, uh, that, I've seen that a lot in propaganda posters, and there's uh, several reasons for that. A lot of times, rays of light are, uh, are symbols of hope. Right. Yeah. Um, they can also be symbols of power because ambition. they're these big, yeah, and they draw you to like a center, one single image. Right. They focus, they make whatever that one thing, that subject in the middle is focused on focused. and just idealizes it. Okay. So we could say that a, an element of propaganda as art would be uh, a single focus. On oh, on yeah. single items like symbiology really is what right. we're talking about here, where yeah, we have these symbols, symbols, of, as like maybe archetypes of things, right? And, and then yeah, it goes, it gets way deep into the psyche. It's like you can feel it, right? Yeah, here. yeah, because you want to get them. You're gonna, you have right. a few seconds. Or I think it's like, um, it's like three. Is it three seconds? Like mm-hmm. an uh, the average person looks at a painting for uh, about three seconds. Yeah, it doesn't get you. Yeah, three, and then you just move on. You're done. And with posters like propaganda, you've got to really hit them really fast because that's on the street. People are just walking by. Right. They need something that's eye catching. It's almost you know, like a like a band poster or right. something like that. They also even kind of go with the same. Type yeah, of a lot styles. of times they do. Yeah, They're very propaganda ish. Right. Yeah, mm. and another thing that you might use in a or see a lot in a propaganda poster is if you're. And you see this a lot in Nazi propaganda, as well as American propaganda, I guess, is um, low angle shots mm. where, like, the the camera or the artist or the viewer is uh, looking up at the subject. Right. And the reason it being, it makes them look powerful right. and makes them see because you know it gives you the view right. of them that they want you right. to see them. Yeah, in. because they're up here and right. you're down there, and so it makes them seem mighty. Right. Uh, whereas if you wanted to show somebody being victimized or right. weak, you might show a low angle shot where they're down on the ground and you know that, and you might yeah. and you can use that in propaganda to uh, exploit, you know, yeah, I'm, to manipulate your audience so, as well. So many different ways. It really comes down to the composition of how you're gonna do, um, how you wanna organize stuff. Cat. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and the propaganda. Got a, got a little visitor today. Uh, but uh, it 
it really is a, like this book, the creative illustration. Yeah. Oh, there we go. By oh, Andrew Loomis. Yes. This book contains, it's pretty much a gold mine for anybody who wants to be a propaganda artist. If it you really, really is. Get into it. You know, because we started talking about this, uh, this podcast before. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but we talk about what we're going to say we before do we do discuss it. discuss some of these things. Yeah. <laughs> there is a little research involved. But we were talking about it, and the first book that came to my mind, even though this book is not about propaganda, right. is is this book. Right, because it it can, it has all... Kitty. All right. It has all of the different types of relationships and in the emotional responses. And it even says right. it at the, at the top of the page. Yeah, relationship of line and emotional response. So certain, and especially with propaganda particularly, it's very cultural. Right. So you've got things that are like, you know, there are some elements that are going to be culturally based that are going to make people, you know, in America really become enraged and inflamed. Right, there's going to be that, you know, yeah. that, uh, that thing, that current event, thing right. that's happening that right. you can always play to right. but then but this, there's also symbols right. that are almost universal and that's what this kind of this immediately when you started talking about that this is mm-hmm. exactly like you said this is what right. came into my head yeah. because it goes through you know there's different ways of composition that mm-hmm. just appeal to right. things that you don't even realize mm-hmm. inside of you just primordial right primordial but and one of the things brain. it talks about is a lot of vertical lines like of buildings and you see a lot of art deco art would be dignity and yeah. thing and a lot of times they actually use blue and in fact they call that blue dignity blue and yeah. a lot of times or royal, yeah, blue. Or royal blue yeah, yeah. they uh, but um and they've got for example these broken shards of glass that they use as an example is it makes people feel uncertain and anxious mm-hmm. um so there's elements like that you can incorporate into your art yeah. to get an emotional response, which is really what art is, is a manipulation. You're trying yeah. to get an emotional response from your work. And in propaganda, you're taking that and, and putting it on it. steroids. Right, just I mean, exploiting the hell out it's of it. Like, it's like the manipulation in your art on PCP right. when, it's, when it's propaganda. It's like, oh, in your face right there. So it gets into the question of, what is is there a fine line between that of propaganda and art or is it just a more elevated form of it well i feel like i feel like they're definitely separate yeah <laughs> i feel like I, I don't know that i would call propaganda art in the sense that as we discussed on what is art we kind of talked about you know art moving you up and and moving people into a next level of consciousness and you know elevating the human existence to a higher plane and all you can get into high high, eyebrow high-headed ideas Mm. when you know that you could technically talk about it in that way if you really wanted to. You, is the if the ideal behind the propaganda is big enough? But that's then you kind of get into a. But it's still one sided. Yeah, history is written by the winners thing because yeah, I mean because yeah. in order for propaganda to exist, you pretty much have to have a counter argument. True. Otherwise, you wouldn't be arguing right. anything. There would be not no going to argue bliss. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> be like, we are so happy. We are happy. Yeah, unless there's somebody who's like, I'm not sure if I am happy. Yeah, I don't think that's right. Yeah. But um, but another thing is that you know apart from the composition itself is colors. Yeah, colors, yeah, colors. definitely. There's a lot of different yeah. colors. For, so it doesn't really go into in this book, but this is more of a composition right. type of book. Yeah, that book definitely. But I mean, for example, though, uh, definitely. You know, we kind of kind of keep talking about the Nazis because you can't really talk about propaganda because they had a, a an amazing propaganda. They had a stranglehold campaign. on propaganda. I they propaganda it up. I think we and tried to combat it. We had some good. Rules. We had some really great. You know, loose lips sink sink ships. I mean, yeah. we had you know a lot of them. You'll remember today. Yeah, you know the, the lady. Quick. The yeah, that's that's uh, mine. R- Rosie the Riveter. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. Lots of, alliteration, lots of I guess, is really what <laughs> yeah, is what in propaganda. Want. It needs to be catchy. It needs catchy, to be catchy. Has strong emotional response. <laughs> You're getting away from the color, though. I want to go back. So uh, color brings up their emotions, <laughs> right? Well, it does. It does. And in fact, the Nazis. I mean, a lot of people think of the um, Nazis' colors, or they, they don't think about the Nazis' colors. Or why they chose. Right. Red, white, and black. And the but, reason they did is because those are bold, strong colors right. that have a lot of contrast. And I think you know those colors whether you know it oh, or not. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, now, what do you, you think know, about if I now? see those colors, I think, you know, if I see red and white together, I think of the white stripes. I mean, there's, well, yeah. you know, if I see red, white, and black but together, again, I think of the Nazis. That's I mean, the same yeah. principle. He right. based all of that on that same kind yeah. of persuasive yeah. thing. Absolutely. That whole band is around that. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, he based his on uh, their color Three. scheme off of the... Um, 
peppermints is what I heard. Well, that, but yeah. he's got a three is his thing too. Everything's three. Third oh, yeah. records. Okay. Every, Every color is three. Oh, white, really? black. Okay. There's three elements. Oh, all right. So, yeah. Little side know. note there. <laughs> Little interesting Jack White tidbit. But it does that. That is another kind of right. side of persuasion yeah. and propaganda. Well, yeah, and, and, and as we were saying earlier, some of that's cultural. So, like, if you're right. doing an American propaganda piece and you have exactly. red, white, and blue, that's going to have a totally different meaning than if you're in Japan or another country and you're doing yeah, propaganda there. I mean, you know, they're going to. It's not going to have that feeling of pride like we might have. Right. In Britain, right. because you might they use got the, the same red, colors. You might use the red, white, and blue for some kind of anti-America campaign. Could there. be, yeah. If if at that time we're not allies, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> as we were not in World War Two. So, so you kind of got to keep going back to that. Yeah. But let's talk about. Um, so, so what have we talked about? <laughs> We've talked about like the elements of color, color as, as their use in there, and like blacks. Like usually when you're doing a painting. I'm talking about the color black. Okay. <laughs> Usually, it's. I feel like I have to clarify because we are talking about propaganda, which can be okay. A right. little, a little, a little racist. racist propaganda. <laughs> okay. Propaganda can be. It can be one sided. It's very one sided and very, right. and it can get dirty. Propaganda can get very dirty. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, and that's why it kind of puts a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. But even if you hate propaganda, you know, it's, it's interesting. But um, in propaganda posters, you're going to see a lot of black dark dark black ink used whereas yeah and you can see heavy uh, blacks and and whites bold whereas colors. yeah bold colors where you have that contrast like even blues right but in a painting you know it's it's uh, against the rules of painting to use black you would never want to use straight right. straight black in a painting you would want to yeah. use a brown that's so dark it's nearly you know or even a blue yeah dark or blue. blue yeah yeah those well it's more it, it's like so you use primary colors basically mm -hmm. Clear cut, bold colors, composition which emits just power or the complete opposite, right. just demoralizing something, mm -hmm. demonizing something, and then there's the subject matter too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the subject itself. matter itself. Yeah, like the way the the body language of the actual people themselves. Right. Like yeah, as far as how they're standing is gonna convey their relationship with each other. Right. Yeah, which goes back into composition. Yeah, it does. It <laughs> goes back into composition. It all comes back around. But then what's interesting is now you've got current artists like Banksy and Shepard Fairey taking these these built-in the, archetypes right, from those images or those uh, from World War II right. propaganda and money and and reusing those in their own art and making new Art that is really propaganda, right? To perpetuate their own message. Yeah, to make yeah, which is you know like with Banksy, he's got the you know guys uh, holding flowers instead of guns and you right. know things like that, and uh, it's like almost individualized propaganda. Yeah, it is. It is, which is like it's an individual message, but yeah. it's also one sided and does fall into propaganda, which is interesting. But a but lot we of, also consider it art. Yeah, a lot. Of, if you it, here in Austin, if you see any of the. Like the Shepherd Ferry by Home Slice. There's a pizza mm -hmm. place. There's that yeah. that one where I can't think of it. I don't think that, I don't know the name of it, but it's got the the lady with the veil over. See, I don't, I don't know if that's a real okay. <laughs> it's not. I don't know because I know that we have and I, and I don't know his name, but there's a, a local Austin artist Copycat? who he, yeah he copied Shepherd Ferry's style and ironically hmm. Shepherd Ferry copied or coincidentally uh, Shepherd Ferry copied. You know, propaganda posters and money right. from back in the day, uh, and then Shepard Fairey got sued for copying the picture of uh, Obama from yeah. the Associated Press. But Shepard Fairey has sued the Austin artist for copying his art or his style, hmm. which is interesting. That is because interesting. it's a lot of a lot of people copying each other, and then other people suing. You know, it's a lot of. A lot of, it's and it's all the, based off of stuff litigious. that was horrible anyway. <laughs> so. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far. Well, but it's all based off of other stuff. Interesting. Interesting, interesting propaganda. So, propaganda is very interesting. <laughs> it does. It 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 rides a fine line of art and manipulation. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah. again, you could argue is art manipulation. Yeah, I mean, all art is manipulation. I mean, you're you know you. That, yeah, emotional I mean, cause response. Because you're you're trying to get an emotional. You're trying to manipulate your audience into feeling something. So right. all movies, all art is is some type of manipulation. 
So I think we've summed this whole thing up as art is propaganda. <laughs> no, not all art is we'll propaganda. We'll see you next week. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we did not say that. But what we do want you to take from this is that the elements in prop it's important to study propaganda because the elements used in propaganda are so exaggerated and so in your face right. that they're very overt and easy to see. And so if you start with propaganda and you study it and you look at these elements like, well, why is this look why does he look powerful here? Why does this right. look, you know, why is this It's always either right. easier to see the extreme right. on one end and the extreme on the other side to get an idea of right. how they actually work. Right. Together. And then you see those elements and then you can incorporate those elements into your in a more subtle and artistic Obviously. way into your own work. And to get then, more impact from your right. audience. Yeah, exactly. So so that's how you build your career. <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. We just outlined it for you, folks. <laughs> that is the million dollar path <laughs> million dollar. to building Woo! your career. Study propaganda. Mm -hmm. And then copy it. Copy it. In your work. In a lesser way. <laughs> for the impact. Make it more artistic. Put it on the internet. And you're done. And that's how you get a million dollars. And you're rich. And send us... What, 10%? Uh, 10, I good. think it's 10, 5, 10 to 5 10. Is, is reasonable. There you go. I don't want to get but too anyway, much. But <laughs> anyway, the point is, is it's, it's a good way to study and it learn is. the elements used and apply right. it into your own work. Definitely. Because uh, those elements are tried and tested and true and uh, yeah. worth they're, looking They're the most primitive brain. They're, they yeah. apply to the most primitive brain that everyone has. Speaking of primitive brain. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh! All right. Sorry. That was bad. We're going to call it? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> oh, man. All right. They can't all be winners, folks. Uh, this, uh, this is kind of weak. <laughs> I know. Sorry. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. If you're watching this on still. YouTube, if you are still watching this, hit that subscribe button. I guarantee we'll have a better podcast next week. I don't guarantee. More clear. I promise hopefully. nothing. I don't either. But... <laughs> all right. If you check out the references below this video online, you can find that book that we talked about. It actually really is full of great compositions for your work. It's a great book. Outlines, lining. Mm -hmm. It's if you're a band artist, that's I would that's one of my favorite books to go yeah, to. Yeah, it's definitely good for band art for gig, sure. Gig Pretty posters. much any posters, yeah. Yeah, you this to... basically should be called mm -hmm. posters. posters yeah. That's really what that is. Yeah, well, it's illustration, which is yeah. It's, yeah. It goes in that realm. But yeah, check that book out. Check us out on YouTube. Favorite if you like it. Share it with a friend, maybe. Yeah. More ten friends. Yeah, ten friends. Ten Everyone friends. Everyone you know. Everybody. Put it in their Christmas stocking. Yeah, it's good. Mm. Feels All right, good. guys. Thanks for tuning in. All right. We'll see you next week. You've been listening to Articulate with Kevin and Sean. Subscribe on iTunes or check them out on drawingandcoloring.com. Always reminding you to keep it simple.